Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, today we're going to make a snap ring groove positioner for my lathe. Uh, I've got to duplicate some toy tractor axles and it's got six snap rings in there and they need to be accurately positioned. And I've done it twice and I failed both times. So I'm going to rig up a jig on the lathe and we're going to do it right this time. Anyway, uh, before we get started, I got a gift from one of my viewers. Uh, Haas in North Carolina sent me some stuff. Let's go through and see what, I get, see what we got here. Okay, here's the box. I've already been through it once. Uh, a lot of cool stuff in there though. And I had to call and ask Haas what these were for. And uh, I'm sure the viewers know what they are, or many viewers. They're a toggle bolt. Do like that put that through the hole, let it, let it go like that, and then push this right there up, and that holds it in there, and then you cut the ties off. And it, this one here is quarter 20, so you got a, uh, of course this would go on the other side, like that. Anyway, that's cool, you give me a, a sack full of those in quarter 20 and 10 24 right there. Uh, gave me a sack full of uh, stubby drills, which I really need. Looks like I may buy a few more and have a full set. That's great. Uh, save that for that right there is like miniature end mills, and I heard uh, somebody else told me that they're uh, for drilling PC boards, but I'm going to use them like for drills and miniature uh, end mills. This right here, I had to ask them what these were too. They drive onto a, a socket head bolt and make a thumb wheel or a thumb bolt out of it. This, like for hand turning a bolt. Various different sizes, quarter twenty. Says what size they are in there, five sixteenths. And that's. Uh, Pretty neat, pretty neat concept. You, you press that on there. Oh, here's one already pressed on. And you've got a thumb wheel. You can turn the bolt with. Well, that's, that was cool. I'd never seen those before. Gave me a bag of odd diameter dowel pins. They're hardened. I suspect they're hardened. I think they're probably uh, roller bearings, but I could be wrong. Uh, it's got a Carbide twist drill, 7.30 seconds. That'll be some, handy for something. And this right here, let me zoom in on that. This right here is, it was in a bag, I put it in this can. I'm gonna dump it out and see what we got. A bunch more of those, uh, mostly carbide I believe, PC drills. That right there is a miniature boring bar. There's a couple of those in here. I haven't taken the protective coating off them yet. Those are little boring bars. I'm sure I'll use them at some point. This one here is a little bit bigger. Uh, I don't know how many degrees. 60 degree. I don't know if I'll ever use that or not, but if I need it, I got it. Big center drill. A couple more little center drills. Spotting drills, I, I use those all the time. Here's something kind of unique. A really long center drill. That, that could be handy. Anyway, thank you Haas from North Carolina. I really appreciate it. Now these are end mills. Eighth inch end mills, I believe. Anyway, thanks a lot. Uh, let's get on with this uh, snap ring jig. Okay, right here is the axle I've got to duplicate. I also got to put those holes in there, which is another trick. Anyway, what I plan on doing, and this is pushing the limits of my lathe right here. this chuck in there and I'll show you. Okay. 
on the far end, I've got that first snap ring groove right up against the collet. Uh, in reality, I'll have it about right there, but I got it sitting like that because it's going to fall out of the collet. But this is the one I'm going to duplicate. The stock will be long enough to hold in that collet. But on this other end, uh, let me zoom out. On this other end, I'm at the limit. You can see my tail stock hanging off the edge there. It'll stay put there, no problem. But I had to put my lantern tool post on there because the carriage runs out of travel to get to that last snap ring. So I'm pushing the limits to my lathe here. Uh, but the lantern tool post came to the rescue right there. The way I'm going to do this, I'm going to line up the tool, which I've just barely got it in there, but with each snap ring. Like that right there. Perfectly lined up. Then on the back side of the lathe, I'm going to mount this bar right there. And where these screw holes are, the, probably a tapering jig hooked in right there. I'm going to bolt a hook on there. And that hook will be a stop for threaded locking collars on the shaft so that I can, uh, oh, and this this will pivot so that I can lift the rod up out of the hook and go on to the next one. Let me put a lock collar on there, you might have a better idea. I thought about making these sliding lock collars and I may wish I had done that because it takes forever to run one of these the full length of this rod. But, I've also got like a micro adjustment for them so I can get really accurate. But that lock collar will sit down on the hook and when you lift it up, it won't allow my carriage to go any further. Anyway, we've got to make a bracket for this far end that will clamp on my angle iron bracket there. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, i got a piece of stock in here. We're going to try out my flood coolant. Get to make a mess. I really like flood coolant though.
Okay, let's give this silly thing a try. I say silly because probably the right way to go here would be have a a DRO there. But I don't have a DRO so this should work. I need to go 18 thousandths in. There's 18 thousandths right there. At some point, I'm going to have to put my steady rest on. This may be the point right here. It's making a nice groove, though. And it doesn't matter if it's slightly rough on the bottom of the groove. I don't think I'm going to have to use my steady rest. Okay, one down, uh, four to go. Filling this, uh, filling the hole for the dead center. Okay, second verse, same as the first. Uh, I'm glad I kept that lantern tool post because I can get closer to this collet chuck and, well, about the same to the collet chuck, but closer to the tailstock. Okay, here's the plan. Got my snap ring groove on the original axle set up at the edge of the vise. And then I'm going to drop this 3 16 end mill into the hole in the original axle. Now, the new axle, line up the snap ring groove centered on the edge of the vise, and I should be in position to drill with that end mill, that hole right there. Well, I may use that again. In hindsight, I probably should have just put a DRO on it. I had that off because I thought I was going to have to use my steady rest. Well, 
Well, there they are. Quite a bit of work. More work than I thought it would be. Five play track, David Bradley play track, tractor axles. That's how to uh, position snap ring grooves uh, without a DRO. In hindsight, I probably should have put a DRO on my lathe. Well, thanks for joining me. Be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.